Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to Oak City's Thursday night Bible study. We are so glad you decided to join us. We thank the Lord for allowing us to make it here yet another day that was not promised. He is such a good father, and we thank him for keeping us. Um, if you all will bow with me, um, I will lead us in our opening prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day and this time to come together, Lord, and learn of your word. I pray that you will bless the service on tonight. Give us what we need, Father. And I pray that we will have ears to hear and hearts to receive what thus saith the Lord. I pray that you bless those on the line and those that will listen later on. And bless those that uh, had a willingness to be here but just couldn't make it. Um, touch those that are um, at conferences or at school testing. Um, Lord, be with them in this hour. Uh, Lord, we thank you. and. Um, we look forward to hearing uh, what you have for us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Uh, at this time, uh, Mama D is going to give us a scripture. And then after Mama D, uh, Brittany, Dr. Brittany, will be uh, giving us a song selection. Amen. Our scripture reading will come from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy, plan, holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek that face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Awesome scripture. <laughs> uh, we sang a little bit of this Sunday, so I'm just going to sing some more of it. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn it face toward you and give you peace. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you. He is for you. He is for you in the morning, in the evening 
weeping and you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing. He is with you. He is with you. And amen. 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 May he give you peace. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank Hallelujah. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that beautiful song, Brittany. Uh, this time, uh, I'm going to open up the floor if anyone has a spoken word or a testimony that they'd like to share. The floor is yours. Well, I'll show a testimony. Um, I feel like somebody has one, so I will uh, stall a little bit for you. Um, so like... Uh, Mama D always says, you know, we all have a testimony because we're here because of God's goodness, his greatness, his mercy has kept us. Um, you know, we're here to see another day that was not promised. Um, I thought about a, a a testimony earlier. Random thought. I don't know what made me think about this, but years ago, I worked at Tinker Air Force Base. And I used to have to go to work at like 5.30, 6 in the morning. It was really early. I think it was like 5.30 in the morning. And one night, I was having some pains and it was really bad. And so I didn't have any medication on hand, but I took someone else's prescribed medication for their pain. And obviously it was prescribed for them for a reason. But I was like, I just got to get out of pain. I, I can't take it. So I took one pill. Matter of fact, I don't know if I took a half. Anyway, it just put me out. <laughs> I was sleep so heavy, um, drowsy. And I woke up the next morning about thinking I was about to drive to work. So my alarm goes off like 4.30 in the morning. I was having a hard time getting up. Got up, went to my car. I tried to start my car and it wouldn't start. And now I'm like, okay, what is wrong with my car? Like, why is it not starting? So I had to call my sister, have her come take me to work and all that. I had the longest day at work, dry, dragging just all day, drowsy. And then I was like, all day, I'm like, hey, what's wrong with my car? I'm going to have to get my car fixed. Just stressing about it all day. I got a ride home. Why did I get home? Now the medication out of my system now, I go to start my car and it started right up. I'm just like, okay, <laughs> it was a reason why God did not allow my car to start. So Amen. I could have been upset in that moment. Like, dang, my car not started. I could have been mad, but I was, I really wasn't tripping. I wasn't going to go to work, but I was like, oh, I don't never call out of work. So let me just go. And so I got a ride. I was just late, but it was just like, I don't know, wow. even in the things that we don't see, we don't know why I could have been avoiding the accident, whatever the case may be, but God is good. I didn't even have any problems after that for a long time. I was like, that was really strange. <laughs> but anyway, I just thank God for that because even in that, it was just like, okay, God, you kept me from un danger unseen because who knows what would have happened. But um, yeah. God is good. All right. Anybody else <laughs> have a testimony they like to share? The floor is yours. Amen. Amen. Beautiful testimony. Thank you. Not really a testimony, but I'll just say that um, I've now seen uh, two coworkers pass away uh, who were young and like in the prime of their careers. So in, uh, in my past job, um, I saw um, this guy named Jay pass away. And he was only like a couple years older than me. And um, he actually, he was going on paternity leave and uh, he had just won, um, you know, like this award for being best employee of the year. And he uh -huh. was going on a paternity leave um, because his first son was born. And um, like, you know, I had like a meeting with him uh, because he, he'd been in the company a long time and he was really nice to me and he like helped me onboard and stuff. Um, and so I had a meeting with him before he went on paternity leave. And um, he was telling me about it and everything. And this was just like a week or two before he passed away. And I was talking to him, um, you know, he's talking about, you know, his wife about to go into labor and stuff. And, um, you know, I felt like, um, you know, God wanted me to just tell him I'm going to pray for his wife. 
but I, I didn't do it because I was like, you know, I don't want to be weird. I don't want to be weird at work. So I, mm -hmm. I, I didn't say anything about it. Um, and he, he passed away like a week or so later. And wow. um, his last post was uh, announcing his, um, the birth of his son. Mm -hmm. And uh, this week, um, one of my coworkers passed away at this job, um, who was mm -hmm. also um, young. And so, you know, just been uh, thinking about it. So definitely just, um, I would just say, you know, keep God first. I believe that, you know, the places that God's placed us, he's placed us there for a reason to reach people. I believe that God wants to reach all different kinds of people, all different walks of life. And that's why he's placed us these different places. Mm -hmm. um, you know, don't, don't be afraid to, you know, to preach the gospel to people. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just think about how you treat people. Think about, you know, are you being loving to people? You know, what, what kind of legacy are you leaving for yourself? What would people say about you if you passed away? Would they say you were loving? What kind of person would they say you are? That's it. Amen. 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 Anybody Thank else you up? for sharing that, Johnson. That's just a great um, exhortation to all of us to mm -hmm. cover our assignments, you know. And Amen. Be, alert, be aware. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I got a quick one. I hate to follow that. That was so, uh, you know, serious. Um, it's, it's on a much lighter note, but I got to get it out. <laughs> um, uh, so God um, is still uh, moving mightily out here um, on on our behalf. It's in, in swap meets behalf. Uh, I hate to ask him like every time I'm out here is the last couple of times been about money. Uh, but you know, my last, you know, that last season I was, I was in, um, he showed me, uh, what real provision, uh, really looked like. And, uh, you know, I, I haven't been concerned with money like I used to be. And it's funny now how he's just kind of like unleashing it. <laughs> so, uh, um, and then, and, and uh, there's another funny thing is like, I find myself, uh, you know, it's coming in. I start thinking about like, okay, now what I need to do, what I need to do. And, and, and sometimes I'll catch myself like worrying a little bit too much and I, and I stop myself. Um, and I can do that now because I've seen them now. So I, I can just stop and be like, hold on now. I went through this whole season. I done figured out like, I, you know what I'm saying? You know, that ain't what I, my focus need to be on. And now that the money come in, I ain't do nothing but just keep him first and just keep doing what I've been doing. And and so ain't no reason to start worrying about it now. So, and I just put the end to my worrying or whatever, and just trying to like think and plan and while well, well, the money is coming in. So um, that's a testimony right there um, in itself for me. But uh, on, on, on the side note, we got another $23,000 just for the month of, <laughs> for the month of July. Um, and it, and this is going to, it's a little, this one is a little bit different. So it's like, they, they're, they're going to reimburse this like for the money we spent, but I know we just got to submit invoices. I ain't even read all the paperwork yet, but it's a way to, you know what I'm saying? Handle it and, and do it, whatever. But anyway, they gave us $23,000 to do summer programming um, in July. And uh, yeah, man, uh, it's, it's, it's up. So uh, thank y'all for the prayers. Um, and he is, 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 is looking, it's looking nice. Um, Amen. So, yeah, man, that's Amen. it. Praise Amen. God. Amen. 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 Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. I just want to thank. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mother Lad. Go ahead. I just want to praise God for giving me a better appetite today. Amen. 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 I want you. I want y'all to keep me in your prayers. Amen. 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 We're well, so glad for those last two testimonies, Ray June. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to tell us money is a is a testimony. He's our provider. Oh, that's He's our it. Provider. Yeah, it is. we thank him for life. We thank him for health. <laughs> we thank him for strength. We thank yes, him for yes, yes. We also thank him for his provision. Thank Amen. God. Thank God. Amen. So we Amen. just had prayer last night for mom lad's appetite. I'm so glad to hear that good report. Yes. God is yes. such an awesome God. Amen. Yeah. I thank God for that too. Grandma, we having fish Friday tomorrow. Just like <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have any other testimony? You say yes, it takes me so long to, to hit this mute button. I don't know what's going on. A lot of times.
I want to say amen and can't find the button. But I don't know about tomorrow night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's okay. Well, don't worry about Fridays. <laughs> on, that, on that same lesser note, my wife is uh, at a uh, women's conference um, in, um, in Texas, but she was truly blessed by your generosity uh, this past fifth Sunday. So uh, on her behalf, I, I, you know, I get to see her when she's happy and she's always going and going and going and going and just taking care of so many people. And uh, when I, when I see her happy and smiling and, and, and just blesses me, but um, your generosity truly blessed her. She was touched. And I know if she was here, she'd be saying this. So let me get that testimony for, on her behalf. And what blesses her, of course, blesses me. So, <laughs> so thank you all very much for your generosity. She felt that. She felt your love. Amen. 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 All right. Does anybody else have a testimony? I don't want to rob y'all. Grandma, your camera's on. Your camera's still on. Okay, there you go. Anybody else have a testimony? All right. Well, if nobody else has any other testimony, I'm going to pass it over to our speaker for tonight, Pastor John. And I guess we can receive him by saying amen. We thank God that he's amen. on after his surgery. And we are still praying for his speedy recovery. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank y'all so much for your prayers. You know, that's a, that's a testimony. I guess I'll... Give a little testimony. <laughs> I, I had a surgery. And, you know, wasn't wasn't uh, <laughs> it was it was it was tough, but I felt them prayers hitting more <laughs> uh, these last few days. But uh, today has been the best day, and I think tomorrow will be even better than today. So I'm just thank, thanking the Lord that it's a. Uh, Healing is coming, and he, he's he's so faithful. Um, and I wanted to actually, if you don't mind, who who's taking over the screen today? I don't know who has control over it. Is it? I do. It's Brittany. Oh, Brit. Oh, hey, doctor. The doctor does. Okay, um, Doctor Brittany, if you don't mind, um, if you could pull up a uh, Psalm twenty-seven, twenty-seven Psalm be precise and we're gonna uh just pray and uh if anybody else has anything to say i have a lot to say about uh my you know i think i think that a lot of my testimony will probably come out today <laughs> but uh we're gonna uh, go to the uh lord in a word of prayer heavenly father um, thank you, Sophia. My mom so beautiful. So beautiful. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we just come before you in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, for uh, being faithful, God. Thank you, God, for your protection, your provision. That that no matter how far we slip, God, you never slip, God. No matter how uh, broken we feel, Father, you're never broken. Father, no matter how weak we are, Father, you're always strong. And you're on our side, Father, and you're fighting our battles for us. And we just, we just thank you, God. Father, I love you. I want more of you, Father. And I cherish my relationship with you. And that goes for everyone here under the sound of my voice, because I know the hearts of at least 90% of people on this call, and I know that they cherish their relationship with you, Father, because you're beautiful, you're perfect, you're holy, you're worthy, you're faithful, you're merciful, your grace is sufficient, Father. The words are true, Father. Your power is everlasting, God. Father, we just trust you, God. We love you, Father. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. So if, if uh, uh, pa uh, Pastor, Dr. Dr. Uh, Brittany, if you could uh, put up uh, Psalm 27, I believe, on the uh, 
on the screen and we're just going to kind of look at this um, a little bit. <clears throat> The first thing I want to say is that it's so important to understand that you're not closer to God or further from God based on knowledge. I want to make that very, very clear, because I think sometimes we get really uh, enamored and impressed by, uh, by people's knowledge of God, by biblical knowledge and things of that nature. And it's not that those things aren't important. They're wonderful qualities. They're wonderful things to, to fight for, to attain. Uh, but understand, that does not make a person closer to God or further from God. Um, to, to give you an example, you know, there are lots of theologians that, that are not close with God. There are a lot of people that know a lot about the scripture. There are people that know more than I know about the scripture, the text of scripture that are not, that don't know him, you know, I mean, who cares if they know about him and don't know him? And, um, and you think about what the scripture says about the devil, it said, you know, in, in the book of James, it talks about how even the devil's angels know, you know, they know who the God is and they, they tremble. You know, intellectual knowledge of who God is, is not, uh, you know, the, the most important thing. The most important thing is knowing him, is having a relationship with him, is being close with him. And you can do that. You can be totally illiterate and know him very, very deeply, know him deeper than any theologian. You, you can have never read anything, only heard stories, heard your, your, your mom and daddy tell you about him, and you can know him. There are children walking around in church buildings that know him, and the, and the, and the elders and deacons don't know him. I mean, so, you know, the, the, the emphasis, you know, the emphasis should be on knowing him. And, and I hate to say it, but and not that Sister Dolores, I'm going to throw you out there because because I use you as an example a lot. Sister Dolores, I don't know that Sister Dolores is a theologian, but I know Sister Dolores goes out there. She knows a lot of scripture, so I don't want to really, you, she's kind of a bad example of this. But I'd rather have Sister Dolores lay hands on me than, I, there's not, I don't, I can't think of a, of a big name or a, a theo, theologian or some uh professor at some uh college you know that <laughs> that i that i wouldn't rather have sister dolores lay hands on me if i was if i was down i'd rather have sister dolores lay hands and call the name of jesus now and i say that about sister dolores but i'm saying that about many of you because you know like you i know that you know him like and because you know him you have power because you know him, you have strength. Like, because you know him, you are, you are, you have arrived. <laughs> you have arrived. Like, like we talk about people think that they think they have arrived. You have arrived if you know him. Like, that is the issue. And I know Sister Dolores knows him. I know she trusts him. I know, you know, I think the one tear flowing out of her eyes on Sunday morning is more precious than every book you've ever read about theology, about, you know, uh, substitution or uh, original sin <laughs> or the Trinity, the Trinitarian doctrine or, or, it, or, or the, the hundreds of other uh, theological, uh, play, you know, things about God that we can figure out through the text of scripture, knowing him. Like David, David never read one page of the New Testament. The New Testament had not come yet. He never met Jesus. I don't know that he knew. In fact, I actually do think that David knew that Jesus was going to die on the cross and rise again because of a particular psalm he wrote, Psalm 42, but uh, he, he wrote some very uh, interesting things that made me think that he did have some intricate details about that. But 
But like, like he didn't know, like he didn't have the wealth of information laid before him that we have today. There were, there were certain, there were many things in the old Testament that had not even happened yet. Like he didn't have, I mean, David didn't have the book of Daniel. Like he didn't like, like, I mean, you think about what David was working with was very limited. And yet as a boy, he faced off against a giant because he knew him because he had been, he had been in position for God to deliver him from the paw of the lion. He had seen God's handiwork against the bear. He had seen, you know, that, that, that his God is faithful. That his God is love and kind. And, and, and he, he's true and he's loyal and he's always by his side. Like, like he knew him. Like, and that's why we get some of those beautiful psalms that, that, that this man of God writes uh, from a first person position with God. Like, like I mean, you know, I, I just get that, you know, sometimes I feel that a lot of what we get fed in the church is like a third per, you know, there's these games, these video games called first person shooter games. And that means that basically when you're looking at the video game, you're seeing everyone you're, you're supposed to shoot. Like, it's almost like you're the person moving around. And then there's other games that you can see yourself in the game shooting people. And then there's, you know, there's all these different, le different uh, video game levels of, you know, I think first person shooter, I think that's the most, uh, it's like you're the one shooting or whatever, walking around or so, but like, like, I just feel that <laughs> like when it comes to knowing Jesus, this first person stuff is just so, so good. <laughs> like, 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 like we want to know him for ourselves. This is not, you know, I heard, uh, Jonathan, um, uh, who was it? Well, somebody in our church recently said, um, they recently said that, uh, that God doesn't have grandchildren. I thought to myself, wow, that's that's kind of deep. Like, you know, it, it sounds like a, a old uh, you know, old saying, God doesn't have grandchildren, but it's kind of true. Like, like just because you're saved doesn't mean your children are just saved. Like they're either his child or they're not his child. Like it, it, they doesn't get they don't get saved through your faith. And uh I was just thinking about knowing him. And the other thing I was thinking about is how fragile we are. You know, these last few days, I felt more fragile than I've ever felt in my life. Um, and uh, it's been, it, there's been some major challenges in the midst of that. Um, <clears throat> and the battle for, the battle for, uh, for my mind, the battle for my, uh, you know, understanding of who I am and, and, and God was, was a little bit tougher these last few days. Thank God for the prayers of the saints, but, but God has prevailed, you know, I mean, and, 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 and the beautiful thing is, is that like, we are extremely fragile and we don't realize it. It's hard to realize you're fragile when God is always giving you strength. You know, I mean, and, and I mean, it, it sounds kind of weird to say it like that because because you just like it almost feels in life like we just have strength. It just feels like it's just there because it's, you know, because it's there, you know, we, we just have it. But in reality, it's him like he's giving us strength. God is supplying our needs. He's given us the strength. And, and when we, when we come to grips with the fact that we like without him, like without his mercies, we really would be consumed. Like, like if he wasn't faithful, we would be utterly consumed, but it's him and he holds us together by his strength, by his power, because he's faithful. 
And, and, and it's, you know, I love how Elise always gives him credit for waking up more. She always gives him credit for, for blessing her and so on and so forth. And, and he just deserves so much credit. He deserves so much credit, so much more credit than we even have to give, but, but we should give the little bit we do, you know, the little bit we can understand we need to give him, give it to him. Um, so those two ideas, uh, I want you to, as we're going over this psalm or, or just reading, I don't even know how many times I'm going to interrupt it. But, you know, as we read through this psalm, I want you to think about two major concepts. Number one, do you know him? Like, do you know him? And, uh, and, and number two, uh, number two, I want you to consider how fragile we are without him. You know, Jonathan David, jo Jonathan Drew came on today and he said um, that he had some, some guys he worked with, colleagues that passed, passed away that were around his age. And, uh, you know, it just doesn't feel like when you're in your 30s that you could pass away. My brother passed away last month in his 40s. And I've known people pass away that were young and old and all different ages. But, you know, it just, it kind of doesn't feel, because we kind of feel invincible. It's kind of that strength thing again. But the truth is, is that we don't know. And, um, and, but the, que but, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we, us understand how fragile we, we are is not a bad thing. It's not bad to know how fragile you are. It's actually good because the more, fra the more we recognize how fragile we are, the more we understand how strong and mighty God is and how much we need our God. So, so sometimes it's good to be reminded of our fragility. It's good to be reminded of his protection. No matter what you think about what happened to you this day, yesterday, and all of last year, it is by his mercies that you were not consumed. You might think, well, I live, you know, I live in a gated community. It's by his mercies that you were not consumed. Oh, I know how to fight. It's by his mercies that you were not consumed. I carry a, a weapon. It's by his mercies that you were not consumed. It's by his power. I'm healthy. I run. I jog. I I do these things. It's by his mercies that you are not consumed. It, uh, your being here right now, healthy, whole, functional, able, is a hundred percent, not 99.9, not 99.9999. Uh, it is 100% because of the goodness and faithfulness of our God. It's by his mercies. By his mercies that we're not consuming. Amen. A hundred percent. This is what David said. And, you know, David was the type of dude, like, I, I hate to get on David again, because, you know, he's kind of like my my uh, my Bible idol. Like, like I, I just really connect with who he is in a way. But, uh, uh, but, but David is, you know, just su like such a mighty man, you know, like, like David can whoop folks. David ain't scared of nobody. Like if David, if David doesn't whoop you when you irritate him, it's because he's just a man of principle. It's not because he can't whoop you. Like there's times in scripture where people talk noise to David, he'd just be like looking at him like coming to the bit, but he'd just be like, you know what? This might be because of the Lord. I'm gonna let that slip. <laughs> like, like, like I mean, this dude, like. He was just, he, he's just that type of dude, man. I mean, a, a man's man from the core, like, and, and I mean, uh, he just, he's just an amazing man of God, but listen to how intimate, I mean, he just knew who he was and he knew who God was like, he got it. He understood. And, uh, I just, I just love some of these Psalms cause you just see how, how much, he relied upon God, and you wonder why he was so strong. You wonder why he won so many battles. This is why David won so many battles right here. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall 
I feel. I'm just going to pause right there. I want you to think about something you've been scared of. I want you to think about something that's coming against you. I want you to think about something that's stressing you out. Now, I want to ask you a question. Is the Lord your light? Is the Lord your salvation? Amen. Amen. Why did David say, the Lord is my light and my salvation? Whom shall I fear? Lord and God. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You wonder why David faced off against Goliath in that fashion? Because he recognized who the strength of his life was. And the strength of his life was bigger than Goliath. <laughs> Reach it. Now, I don't know how many times this happened to David, but we see in the pages of scripture, this happening over and over and over again, this next sentence, we see this happen to David over and over in scripture, and he triumphs, he triumphs over it most every time, but it says, when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. How many of y'all have that testimony? Somebody came after your job, somebody came after your family, somebody came after somebody. Somebody tried to sue you. Somebody tried, like, how many had that testimony? You, that disease, the doctor said, uh, this and this and such and such. Amen. 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 Now, th now, this next thing he says, I think it's kind of rhetorical. It's like, even if this was to happen, he says, though an host should encamp against me, if they surround my house, Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Listen to that declaration. I've seen God do too much. I've been delivered too many times. I've seen his power. So there's no amount of, there's no army you can set against me. There's no host you can put around my place. There's nothing you could put in my life that's going to make me go against this vow that I my heart shall not fear. Amen. That's tough. I want to get there, David. I want, I want to get there. The war should rise against me. And this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David wanted to be with God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. He knew Amen. him. He knew him. He didn't know. He might not have known about him as much as this person and that person. John MacArthur and David, I'm pretty sure John, uh, you know, there are some guys I shouldn't have named John MacArthur. John, I do believe John MacArthur is a godly man. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to, but John MacArthur is one of the leading theologi theological guys in the, in the world, you know. Uh, you know, there, there's, these, there's these guys, they know so much. 
you know, if, if you compare their knowledge with David's not, I don't know, you know, I think maybe they, some of those guys might know some stuff that David doesn't know. They might know, you know, you know so, some little, you know, they might have studied the Greek and the Hebrew a little closer and they, they might have figured out that, you know, you know, David might have had a, a few things a little bit off and, it, you know, and understanding this and that maybe, you know, I, I don't know. But here's the deal. Do they know him? <laughs> like, like, do you think they know him like David? Do you think they can sit there in the middle of arrows shooting through the air and just say, you know, I know there's people going to fall down, but it won't come near unto me. Preach. Preach. Like, 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 do you think they know him? Come on, Doc. Come on. People getting killed, oh, slaughtered all around, looking all around. And, 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 and yet, and yet you're, you're just dead set on your focus, dead set on what you're called to do because you know your God is not going to let one of those arrows come near you. <laughs> Amen. Preach. There's going to be a bunch of people fall on this side and a bunch of people fall on that side, but it will not come near unto you. I don't know the, the guys like John MacArthur, who I respect. Like, I don't know that they can say that. Glory to God. I preach, bro. Preach anyhow. Preach. Who do you want to be? I want to inquire. I want to be with the Lord. I want to see the beauty. How many, how many of them know that he's beautiful? Preach, brother. Okay. How many of you know that he's beautiful? That he's all that matters. That he's satisfying. That he's sustaining. That he's near to the brokenhearted. Mm. That, he, that, he, that he's so wonderful. And like, like, like he... Like there's stuff about God that you just don't find. Like, I hate to say it. There's some stuff about God. You don't even find the pages of scripture. Like it's about knowing him. It's about Amen. knowing him. Amen. You might not find a verse in the scripture that tells you to wear the red top, not the blue one. But if you know him, he might tell you to wear the red tie, not the blue. Like, like, like he can say anything when you know him. He can lead and Preach. guide you beside the still waters. If you know him. Preach. If you're yeah. with him, he can, like, that's what the shepherd, that's what Psalm 23, it's the Lord is my shepherd. What does that mean? That means he's guiding me. He's there with me. He's telling me where to go. He's creating the still waters. He's telling me where to eat at. He's feeding me. He's providing for me. His staff, his rod, they're protecting me. Preach, brother. Preach that word. Preach it. Do you know him? Do you know him? You know, I don't think David was confused about who he was. He's the same one who said, what is man that thou art mindful of? Like, why do you care about little old us? When I look at all that you've created in the universe, why are you thinking about me? The same one who said that said, though a thousand shall fall at this side, 10,000 at that, it will not come near unto me. Preach. Amen. He knew him. Man. That's why, that's why you can't trade. You can't trade. I want Marvin laying her hands on me. <laughs> you can keep all the, you can have a hundred John MacArthur's in one room. I want Marvin Lad coming out and laying her hands on me and praying for me. I want somebody who knows him. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't distinguished the first lady, Marvela. <laughs> but I want somebody who knows him. Like, do you know that he's beautiful? Do you know that he's beautiful? <laughs> like, do you know that? Like, is he the apple of your eye? Is is God the apple of your eye or is something else? Like, what is it? 
Is it the money? There are many men in the graveyards who are rich. And there'll be many more. I want to be satisfied with you, Father. I want to love you, God. I want you to come first, Father. You are the most high God. There's none like you and none beside you. I love you <laughs> and nobody else. I love you over everybody else. I love you. I love you, God. I love you, Father. And here's a beautiful thing. Here's a beautiful thing. When you know him, these are some of the results. The Bible says in verse six, it says, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, shall he hide me? He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies around about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Do you praise God? <laughs> like, do you praise God? Those tears are valuable. Those hands raised are valuable. Like, like when you raise your hands, when your heart is open to the Lord, when you're calling upon his, when you're telling him how wonderful he is, that's valuable. That's important. It's more important than your knowledge. It's more important than how many verses you've memorized. I want you to memorize verses, but I want you to know him so much more. I, I I know I know some of us like to like to be real cordial when we're when, when praises are going up in the sanctuary, but I'm gonna tell you, that ain't gonna be me. It ain't gonna be me. I'm gonna try. Sometimes you know, lately my legs been hurting a little bit. You know, sometimes I sit down through a little bit of it, but I'm gonna try to get up and have my hands raised up at some point in it and, and, and say hallelujah at some point. Like like I mean like like praising them's important. Like it, it's it matters. Amen. To lift him up matters. Yes, amen. Would you rather praise God for the rest of your life better than you ever before have $10 million? Don't answer that question. Just ponder your heart. Just ponder your heart. I'm pondering mine too. I'm pondering mine. How important is it to praise his holy name? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can you scroll down a little bit, uh, doctor? I'm sorry. I was trying to scroll down on my thing. I didn't realize what was happening. Okay, we're good. I think. Last two verses. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. 
That's why I want Sister Dolores praying for me. That's why I want Elise praying for me. That's why I want Ray June praying for me. I want Pastor Darrell praying for me. I want, I want those people that I know know him praying for me because you know what? I know he hears them. I know he's he acts upon, like he listens to their request. They have the petitions of the things that they ask. Like I want those people calling upon the name of the Lord for me. I'm not saying other people don't know him. I'm not trying to put us on some pedestal. I'm putting knowing him on the pedestal. Knowing him is on the pedestal. I'm going to read that verse again here. Oh, Lord, when I cry with my voice. <clears throat> if you've never been in a position where you needed the Lord to hear you cry, then you just haven't lived long enough. There will come a time where you will want the Lord to hear your voice. You'll want the Lord to hear you cry out. I'm sure most of us on this, that I know most of us on here, because I know most of us on here personally. And I know that most of us have been in that position many times, a few times, or many times, some of us. But we want him to hear us. We want to have mercy on us to answer us. And then Pastor Darrell, I love Pat, and this is why we're ending here actually, because when, when I when, at the end of this thing, I don't know what's gonna happen, but at the end of my portion of this, but uh, this is something that Pastor Darrell says a lot. Uh, and when I read this passage, I said we're gonna stop right there. Mm -hmm. Pastor Darrell, Pastor Darrell quotes this verse a lot, um, and he uses it so well to teach. But uh, it says, "When thou sayest, seek my face." My heart said unto thee, my face, Lord, will I seek. <laughs> I mean, do you hear that? Like God is speaking to him and he is committed to carrying out God's requests in his life. That's an attitude of somebody who knows him. He not only is hearing from God, he's committed fully to carrying out whatever God has said and called him to do. That's a deep, personal relationship with God. Do you know him? How deeply do you know him? How much do you, like, like, do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love him more than the world? Did the $10 million thing throw you off? Like, like, I mean, examine your hearts. Did the, ten, like, do you love him more than the things of the world? Is he more precious? Is he more valuable? There's no question in value. If there is, then, then you're in the wrong place. <laughs> when the Lord calls you, and ask you to do something. What is your response? I'll tell you what, I'm, I want to seek his face. I want to be found seeking the face of the Lord. I want that to be my testimony. That brother John saw the Lord's face all the days of his life. He might've had some mishaps and some missteps, but he got back on the wagon and fought as hard as he could to achieve the will of the father. I would love for that to be my testimony. I'm far from that at this point because I hope I pray that my race is far from over. <laughs> but, I, but I would love for that to be my testimony. Love. Know him. Know him. Know him. That's Daryl. Hey, Amen. Um I mean, beautiful, beautiful lesson, beautiful lesson tonight. Um, certainly enjoyed it. And I've read this a lot of times. I think we've all hear it, uh, heard it, uh, at least scripture form at least for a second. Uh, I think uh, I think we've all read it several times, and people can read it with so much uh, emotion and fervor that you know we just the words just jump off the page. I, I've never thought about it the way you did it tonight, though, uh, because the, every time I read this, every time I, I hear about it, I, I think about just confidence in the. Um, in the in the battle to head, a confidence you're gonna win the war, a confidence you're gonna be overcome, a confidence you're gonna be a try, you're gonna be triumphant. 
uh, based on your your faith in God and what God has done uh, in, in the past. Uh, but I, I've never uh, seen it the way I think it's actually written uh, in the way you brought it out tonight uh, in, in verse 8. Uh, when thou sayest, seek thee in my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face will I seek. And what you said in verse four, one thing have I decided of the Lord that will I seek after. I mean, so I uh, see seeking two verses there and it's all about the Lord. And this is, he could have said one thing I desired of the Lord that will I want to win the battle. I want to be victorious in everything. That's what I want. That's my, my quest, but that's not it at all. And the only thing he wanted to do here really is, is to know the Lord, he, he, uh, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Not as a place to live. Nobody lived in the, in the temple you know, like this. This wasn't, 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 wasn't a place to live. But he just wanted to be close to the Lord, get, get to know the Lord. And that's that was his desire. And, and um, that should be our desire and not the pursuits of things that God just throws in, like, you know, victories over battles or victory over enemies. Uh, it was something far deeper. And that's the one thing, the, the singular thing that he desired. And that is just to seek the Lord and to he says, seek after and, and seek his face. So I think it's a it's a great lesson tonight because I, I don't, you know, I know when uh, I pray about things, and I got a list of things I pray about quite a bit. And, you know, and I say other things about the you know, Lord's will be his vessel and clean vessel be fit for his use and things like that. But rarely do I really take time to really think about just want to be closer and to get to know him. Uh, like, like Paul said, I want to know him, you know, and, um, and that's what they were seeking after. And he was victorious and he was mighty and and, and great and, and, and powerful, someone to look up to. But you ask him, I, I just want to know the Lord. And, and that was his pursuit. That's his, and, and he didn't say one of the things. He said one thing, if I desire. That, that, this is my life's mission. This is my life purpose. And that's just to get to know know the Lord and to know Him uh, more and more. And so I actually like, I uh, really enjoyed t tonight's lesson because I think that's something for all of us um, in all of our pursuits. Uh, make sure that we get this pursuit right, and that is to to seek His face and to to know Him, to to actually know God. So I I enjoyed the lesson. Beautiful, beautifully done, uh, Pastor John, uh, uh, Pastor Bobby. It's a church say Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Come off your mic and just say amen. 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 This amen. is a great, great amen. word tonight. Um, I was um, thinking about this song as he went to Psalm 27. This is the last um, this chapter I was trying to remember. Uh, I was trying to memorize this chapter, this very chapter, a couple of weeks ago. Whenever that uh, we were at uh, Israel, uh, this scripture came to mind. So I think I, think I just want to memorize that whole chapter. And I started working on uh, just memorizing it because it's just such a powerful piece. And I had to smile when uh, Pastor John came to it tonight. I said, well, the Lord's just confirming this is this is for me. This word tonight, I mean, it was just so rich. It was down my alley. God had already set me up to receive it. It was just really, really a choice. I thank God for, for being obedient. Uh, Pastor John, you being obedient. I think my favorite part was uh, you said you're looking forward to getting up out of that chair and giving God his praise. Uh, that, that just blessed me. Um, it just blessed me so good. Um, and uh, I thank you for soldiering on. Uh, to deliver this lesson because it's very powerful, it's very much needed, and God gave it to you, give to us, and I uh, thank you for not um, not shirking from it, despite you know the things you're dealing with. So I just I just was blessed on many 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 levels um, by the, by this message. Um, uh, I will give you a foretaste. I'm back in the rotation for next uh, Thursday, God willing. Um, and I was thinking as Dee was reading the scripture. Um, um, I think if God says the same, the next time I speak, I'll speak on Selah, you know, uh, you know, giving God some praise. But uh, uh, and uh, I'm just excited. I may get there Sunday, but it's stirring that the, 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 the you know, she read from Psalms and Pastor John came from Psalms and Psalms, as we know, is about giving God the praise. The women are studying Psalms. It's like uh, it's like Pastor John said tonight. Praise is so important and we got to we got to give it up to our God. So. I, I just, I'm just so blessed. I'm really, really blessed. This message was on time. It was for me. I think I got many witnesses here say it was for them. I thank God for letting you, letting you, uh, for being, thank God for uh, for you letting him use you, Pastor John. Uh, just so many. And this is one of those ones that, you know, uh, I think I'll be going back through and listening to again. And I think, I think many people on this thing will, will do the same. There was very, very, very rich lesson. Again, thank you for being used, all of you. Um, Amen. Used, uh, 
in just tonight. And uh, the song, Brittany, when y'all sing that song Sunday, I just felt like it was angels in the church, you know? I just felt like it was just angels in the church. Y'all were singing that song and worshiping God. Man, it felt good. And I appreciate you uh, giving us a little taste of glory <laughs> in, in, in that song. So back to you, Lise. Amen. Amen. Yes, it, indeed, it was a uh, beautiful uh, on Sunday and tonight. Um, so thank you, Brittany, for uh, singing that song. And, and uh, Pastor John, thank you for the message on tonight. Y'all know I'll always be feeling like it's for me. <laughs> but I, pray for me. <laughs> I go I was like, I'll I'll let y'all have that too. But um, but on a more serious note though, like when you were talking about like the riches of this world and things like that, and I like I always just, you know, throughout the day randomly think like we can't take none of this with us. Nothing. Not and so all we have to do is just focus on God, you know, and his will for our lives. And so thank you for that reminder. And I pray that everyone else will just take it with them. You know, I'm I'm gonna definitely uh meditate on that tonight for real. Um, but one of the questions, well, it's like three things I wrote down, but I just want to reiterate that. So you said, How important is it to praise his holy name? And so it's very important. And then get committed to carrying out God's will for your life. I'm definitely going to highlight that because I truly needed that reminder. Thank you. And um, when the, when the Lord calls you, what is your response? Because mm -hmm. again, the things that we go after, the nice jobs, the cars, the house, all that is nice. But again, we cannot take any of it with us. So what really matters? Thank you. All right. So at this time, hopefully I went on long enough for someone to feel led to pray us out on tonight. And before they pray, I got a witness in the church chat. Somebody else said they were this Sunday. They felt like they were hearing angels in the background. So, uh, <laughs> so they direct messaged me. So I won't give a name since they didn't. But um, I got a witness. God is worthy of his praise. Amen. Yes. They might have to run it back next Sunday or this coming Sunday for sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody want to pray us out? If not, I'm going to ask Uncle Daryl, Pastor Daryl, if you okay. would. Okay. All right. Any uh, prayer requests tonight? Yes. Uh, my name, uh, next step in my career path. Mm -hmm. uh, People struggle with mental health and uh, one unspoken. Okay. I have another exam Monday in school in general. Okay. Uh, please keep, continue to keep me and my family in your prayers. Uh, also, I actually failed to mention that uh, Abigail's last uh, appointment went very well in terms of, yes, yeah, so. I, I can't mention this, so I'm just gonna throw that in there. Abigail's Amen. last one went, went beautifully. So, hmm. all right, all right. Let's uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you. We come before you in Jesus' name once again. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings, your goodness, your mercy, your love and kindness, your grace. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for visiting us again this night. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for uh, speaking to each uh, heart and mind here that, that, that uh, joined here in this meeting tonight. Thank you, Lord, for uh, giving Pastor John the strength to deliver your word uh, in all of his pain, Lord, to still be um, heralding your word uh, to your people. We ask you, Lord, to take this. Let each one of us take this word and apply it to our hearts, Lord. Bless this assembly in a mighty way, Lord. Bless you. Every person here, Lord, you know our needs, you know what's on our mind, you know what's on our heart, you know the things that, that trouble us, you know the things that lie ahead. We ask you to give us strength and trust and all the faith in you uh, in, in the time ahead. Lord, you heard the request this evening, Lord, for those with health issues and uh, those unspoken requests and those with uh, plans and, and school and academics and so forth. Lord, you to continue to bless uh, allow us to be successful in everything we put our heart and hands to do, Lord, to your your honor and your glory. Lord, just make us into the people you have you have us to be, Lord. Bless us in everything. Give us the wisdom and knowledge and understanding and the, an insight and the desire and determination to be children of God, Lord, to be your children, Lord, living for you, 
showing forth your light and love in, in a dark world. Your Lord, Lord, just continue to bless us in, in all of our things, Lord. Let us put you first in all of our lives. It was a, a new desire, a new encouragement, Lord, to just pursue you as never before. Lord, bless uh, the work of our hands, bless this church, uh, bless Pastor Bobby and his family and every member and visitor, follower, uh, anyone that come in our doors, Lord, to hear these broadcasts, Lord, and let your word speak to their hearts and minds, Lord, to save and to heal and to deliver and to protect, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Lord, just bless everything we do, Lord, to Lord, to let it um, fulfill your purpose in the hearts and minds of everyone that, that comes in contact with us or hear us, Lord, that it be the honor and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that beautiful prayer. Um, that concludes our Thursday night uh, Bible study. Um, it'll be rebroadcast on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Um, we'll see you on Sunday. Uh, if you are still on Zoom, 1030 um, in the building, we are open. Uh, 9501 North Military Ave, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, so we hope to see you. And until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you in Jesus name.